Uh, today we're going to go through some trailer maintenance stuff, um, some of the basics because it, it can get lengthy. There are some trailer maintenance schedules out there, and you should, just like your race car, you got to do standard stuff and maintenance to your trailer before you go towing, just like before you go on the track. So there's a, a host of things that you should check. Some items you may have forgotten. Hopefully, we'll remind you. The basic stuff, I think everybody knows. Um, so the first, we'll, we'll jump right in as far as that part of it goes and start with the ground and start on tires. Trailer tires are not DOT rated. And Brad, if you can flip to one of the trailer pictures, I can make it work with whatever one you can, whatever one you can pop up. But um, your trailer tires. Uh, Trailer tires are indicated, there you go, have a wear, most trailer tires have a wear indicator on them. So when you look at the tread, you'll be able, to, there will be steps in them. Now, not all trailer tires, but the majority of them have this little insignia on the side. And then if you flip to the tread picture, there will be steps that will say eight, as you can see there, uh, two, four, six, eight. That's your wear. When you get down to two, that's how you over grease a bearing. When you get down to two, your tires are pretty thin. The worst thing that can happen to you, obviously, when you're when you're going to the racetrack is is you're on the interstate and you have a flat. So obviously inspecting your tires for cracks, for wear, even for age. Now there's some pages that will show and that will be available. If most of us know how to read the date codes on our tires, there's several different facets that will tell you that trailer tires should be replaced every five years. The UV of the sunlight is really what kills any tire or any rubber surface. Use your best judgment. If the tires start to get cracked on the sidewalls, my recommendation is get new ones. And there's several different tires out there to choose from. I don't necessarily recommend and one brand of tire over another. It's what you like and what you're used to. But bear in mind, trailer tires do wear out. And when they start to get pretty thin, they're pretty susceptible. Um, so inspect your tires, go through them. The other important thing to remember is trailer tire pressures. Now trailer tires not being DOT rated, the manufacturer doesn't say run these at 32 PSI or 40 PSI, the tire, the trailer manufacturers will tell you to run the tire pressure indicated on the tire for maximum load. Okay. A fast rule of thumb is five lug tires are, are 50 PSI. Six lug tires are typically 60 PSI. Eight lug tires are typically 80 PSI. Now that's a, just a standardized version of, of how they are, you should read the tire itself to get the cold tire pressure. Now, remember, air expands in these tires, so you got to be careful that you don't overinflate them or underinflate them. Okay, so start with your tires, tire wear, tire tire uh, condition, tread, and even if they are worn on the inside or outside, it is pretty. It is. And it does happen if you bang one of the biggest potholes, like they say here in Indiana, the smoothest two and a half miles is around the 500 track. So you hit a pothole pretty good. You can throw your trailer axles out of alignment. And we'll get into that in another episode, but, but it is possible. So take a look at your tires, big condition. Um, and if you pop up one of the screens that show the tire from the manual, there's some good general information on here on tire fundamentals. Most of us know how to read the tires and what they do and what they are. But if you don't, it's good to brush up on that kind of stuff. Um, the next thing we want to get into is coming from the tires is the lug nuts. Everybody standardly knows we've got our standard wheel stud, our standard lug nut, and what we call our crowned lug nut. Just like on your race car, if you keep tightening and tightening and tightening your wheel studs, you're going to stretch these out, make them weak, and then you're going to tighten them and you'll snap a stud off. So 
you want to keep some lube on them, spray them with WD-40 at the beginning of the season or any kind of lubricant that you have, loosen all your lug nuts, and then retighten them and torque them to the specific torque. The majority of trailer manufacturers will tell you that lug nuts on all, mostly all trailers, is 100 foot-pounds. So 100 foot-pounds on your lug nut torque. If you murder them, you'll stretch the stud and run a possibility. If it gets a little rust, you'll twist it off. So again, keep these lubed. 100 foot-pounds is your standard torque on mostly all lug nuts, and that's standard lug nut or the acorn lug nut or the acorn lug nut or your, or your aluminum wheel lug nut. NICs will work. Anything to keep them free. So you, any, anything to keep them free. NICs works awesome also. Um, so keep your lug nuts. That way, if you do have a flat, you're not, you're not along the road and you've got to get a giant breaker bar out. And again, you run the risk of twisting off uh, a, a wheel stud. Uh, most of the trailers that, we're, that you're using for your Mustangs are six lug. They're a, a 5,200 pound axle. Your five lugs are typically 3,500 pound axles. But it, again, you want to avoid any issue. If you have a problem, you want to have it be able to solve it as fast as possible and get to the track. So tire conditions, lug nuts. The next thing is lubing your, uh, we'll, we'll say lubing your axles. And I've got a beautiful picture of what not to do to lube your axles if Brad will pull that up. Most of your modern axles, everything built here in the past several years, have what's called easy lube hubs. And what that means is there's a grease cert at the end of the axle, uh, and it's a, drilled, it's a drilled axle, so it lubes the front and rear bearing simultaneously. However, as you see here, if you don't control your power grease gun, you can blow the back seal out and drown the brakes. Obviously, that's what's happened in this picture. So this is a dramatic version of what not to do. Now, typically, just like everything else, when you lube these, look for the grease coming forward because you're greasing the front and rear axle simultaneously when you're pumping grease in an easy lube hub. You don't have to murder it. Now, the book says you should lift the tire off the ground with a jack and spin it while you're doing that. That's what Dexter and Lippert both recommend. Do we all do that? No. Is it critical? It's only more critical if it's right after you've repacked your wheel bearings, which is an annual maintenance thing, depending on how many miles you tow a year. Okay. Uh, many manufactured charts are out there that say repack them once a year repack them annually, but it depends on how many miles you pull. But as long as you lube them periodically, and, and lubing the axles is typically something that is, uh, we recommend every three, every three months or every 3,000 miles uh, at the outside. So, so coming up forward, um, again, tires, lube, the next thing, you know, tires, uh, tire pressures, lug nuts, lube the axles. This should avoid any of your major problems that you get or that gets you to the racetrack on time. A few other things that, that a lot of people miss is one thing is the coupler. Now this is a straight tube coupler, but the, your coupler, very seldom do we ever look underneath the coupler. We just drop it on the hitch ball, lock it, lock it down and go. What you have to remember is when this is when the trailer ball is in this and this is locked down in position, this is actually a wearable item. This be this piece right here. If your trailer ball is loose inside here and you've got a significant amount of, of gap towing four or five thousand pound trailer and that's rocking back and forth that's going to create a significant amount of wear in a short period of time. So take a look at this piece here. Now, there are kits available online where you can buy these different pieces to match whatever your current trailer has. But this is an item that a lot of people forget about because it's never mentioned in general maintenance. But it's a very important piece for safe towing because if this gets really loose, then all of this 
uh, wears out prematurely, and it could actually have the ball pop, the trailer pop off the ball. So again, very important to take a look at this also. Okay, there's, yeah, there's the hitch I was holding up and the device that will wear, and that's where the ball goes. Um, again, that's a wearable item. So be sure to check that your ball is, and, your, and your coupler is not too sloppy. Um, again, just like in racing, if you've got something worn and you've got a lot of slop and it's under a lot of load, especially hitting the brakes, hitting the gas, hitting the brakes, it's going to cr create a lot of premature wear. So bear that in mind. Um, and it can be adjusted as you see the bolt in the bottom. And sometimes those work themselves loose, the bolts stretch. Again, same type of theory. Check that now and then. It may just need a quarter turn to tighten it up. Um, going down my list is the next thing in safety is all of your modern trailers have a breakaway device. Now, this is typically mounted up on the tongue and wired into a, a, a battery that is totally separate from the 12 volt system in your trailer. This emergency breakaway has this plunger in it and the plunger is hooked to a cord and then you hook that cord to the tow vehicle. In the event that the trailer separates from your tow vehicle, then this will pull out and this device will activate your electric trailer brakes on the trailer. Now, your trailers will have a, a black box that looks like this. And inside this box, now sometimes those are mounted underneath the trailer and sometimes they're mounted in the trailer, in the cabin, in the body of the trailer. Inside that box is typically a little NICAD battery. This little battery, according to the book, has a shelf life of five years. A lot of times they last longer. But this little 12 volt battery is what powers that, that electric device to power your brakes in the event of an emergency that the, that the trailer breaks away. Now, that battery is charged typically when you're plugged into your tow vehicle. There is a diode that prevents that battery from running your interior lights. A lot of customers will say, well, I'm going to plug that directly into my 12 volt battery that I have running my interior lights so that that has plenty of voltage. But if you leave your interior lights on and that battery goes dead, then the system's not isolated. So if it happens, then you've got a problem. So according to the DOT, it's a separate circuit for that. Again, it's air on the caution side of caution be safe it's designed this way my recommendation is leave it that way um again those batteries have only a certain shelf life you can charge them with a a, a standard battery charger under low 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 amperage here's our electric trailer brakes for those of you that don't know how electric trailer brakes work this is an electric trailer brake setup the oval puck at the bottom is an electromagnet. So what happens is, is when you push on your brake and you go through your brake controller, that's the emergency piece. The, when you push on your brake, that puck is an electromagnet. It sticks to the drum, and as the drum rotates, then it forces mechanically the brakes to separate the shoes. So that's how your brakes work. So the higher your voltage is, the more the magnet sticks, the more the brake stick. So on your trailer brake controller, when you adjust the gain up and down, you're actually adjusting the amount of voltage going to those trailer brakes. Now, a, a fast way to check your trailer brakes is with the help of somebody and your trailer's hooked up, have them push on your brake pedal if you go back to your trailer and you put your ear down by the wheel, you will hear those electromagnets humming. And it's pretty distinctive hum. And that will tell you at least that those are working and that wheel is working. So just a fast check of, of how you can check the electromagnets uh, working is just listen for the hum with somebody having the brakes applied. Um, and again, those mechanically separate and open up, and that's how the brakes work. Um, so 
so we talked about our breakaway switch, our breakaway battery, our trailer brakes, our lug nuts. Um, another thing is on your brakes, some trailers have self-adjusting, what we call a self-adjusting R axle, which is kind of like uh, what we're used to with our older cars where you'd pump the emergency brake back and up to adjust the, adjust the rear drums. Uh, they work the same in a similar fashion. They'll self-adjust. Some don't. Um, you would adjust these just like you would adjust the drum brakes on your on your old Mustang where you have to get in from the backside, take the plug out, and spin the little adjuster at the bottom. It would be down on this picture. It's right above the red spring. It's a standard rear brake drum adjuster. Um, pretty easy for that. When, you, when you're also checking and you have aluminum wheels, this is especially prevalent on trailers with spread axles or three axle trailers. When you're cornering or going around or parking and you're in the paddock maneuvering around, none of those trailer wheels turn. So you put a tremendous amount of pressure also on the rims. So check the rims to make sure they don't have any cracks in them um, because they will crack over time. And I've seen that happen. A little more prevalent on triaxles and people doing a lot of heavy cornering when you're parking, uh, trying to maneuver through a paddock. Um, we talked about pack, repacking your wheel bearings and watching for the rear seal to come out. The magnets, if you've got hydraulic brakes, that's a, that's a, a, a kind of a different animal. This is the, all of the modern trailers and all of your tow vehicles follow this same rule of electricity as far as how the plugs are laid out. And this is your standard layout. There is what they call the trailer facing plug and the tow vehicle facing plug. So these round sevens are universal. So no matter who the manufacturer is of the trailer or the tow vehicle, this is the standard wiring setup. And that leads me to checking all of your brake lights, checking all of your clearance lights, making sure your turn signals and brake lights all work. Some trailers have built-in fuses, some don't. Again, a way of checking these things that, I, that we do here is we take our jumper box, ground the chassis of the trailer, and then use a jumper wire to test individual pegs in your round seven on the trailer so that you don't have to have it plugged into a tow vehicle necessarily to check it. So again, another little way of checking stuff prior to hooking up so that you know the trail, everything in the trailer is working. Um, I get a lot of phone calls to say, my trailer brakes aren't working or my trailer lights aren't working. I'm like, do you know it's the trailer or the tow vehicle? Well, it worked before. Well, maybe you didn't have the plug quite connected and that created enough resistance to blow the fuse on the tow vehicle. So this is a way of checking the trailer isolated so that if you do have a problem, you know which way you've got to check. But just like Kenny said, you, you have to have a checklist for your trailer, just like I have a checklist for my race car. And that's your pre-race checklist. It should be your pre-tow checklist. So tires, lug nuts, breakaway switch, trailer brakes, wheels, tire pressures, uh, you know, condition of all your hinges, condition of all your locks, condition of all your coupler, uh, all your lights. So there's a, there's quite a bit to it to tow and safety. And, and that's a very important thing. This is our routine. This is just a fast, that's okay, put that up. That's a fast routine list. For even your safety chains, um, you gotta be sure that however they're attached, they're not loose. In the event that you have a problem, you want that problem to be solved as quickly as possible. So again, this is another little safety checklist. Buy your parts from a reputable place. Um, I'm a Dexter fan. Dexter and Lippert are the two new, are the two big axle manufacturers. So both of them make great products. I sell them both on on my products. Um, there's a lot of aftermarket stuff out there. Nothing. Just like what Kenny says, if you've got Dexter, stick with Dexter. If you've got Lippert, stick with Lippert. Um, it's just a good idea from a safety standpoint. Um, that's kind of the general jumping off point for the season. Make sure that your ramp doors are lubed, all your doors are lubed also, so you don't run into any issues with hinges. 
<clears throat> the other thing is your ramp door uh, spring assist. Majority of those will have a red square bolt that takes a 3 8 open end wrench. Be sure that you tighten the drums and the spring. That ramp door assist spring is very, very, very similar to the ramp to the garage door spring you have on your garage door. If that slips, then you're not getting any spring assist and you'll have to adjust that. And they are adjustable, but make sure that those are adjusted and tight. Uh, so you've got maximum spring uh, assist. You don't want to over tighten it or the door will slam every time you lift it up. Um, you know, again, your, your man door, your entry door, be sure your locks are good and everything like that. Um, it's always good to have a nice coupler lock as opposed to just a lock that goes through the, the latch on your front coupler. Um, many different locks and safety stuff out there. That's a, we'll get into that in another section 